In November 2020, I set foot into the little run of Kutch to film and photograph foxes. The objective was to spend as much time with them as I possibly could and document intimate moments to the best of my ability. It wasn't easy to approach them at first, but over time, I found myself right within the heart of their daily lives. This is the follow-up story of Imli, Secret and Nightshade, told through the many antics of their young ones. It's the story of childhood, family, innocence, and survival against the odds. Stick around for the entire episode because we're going to experience some of the best kept secrets of the deserts of India. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Kenneth Lawrence and this is the final chapter of my Deserts of India series filmed entirely in the little run of Kutch. Before we get to the foxes, a huge shout out to Run Riders and Soar Excursions who have supported me with my vision throughout this series. It's March 2021 almost four months since I began filming here. Aditya from Soar Excursions, who had a couple of days to spare, joined me to film a second angle. We were on our way to Imli's den. Trucks and JCBs have transformed the landscape here. The last time I visited Imli, her teats were evidently full, suggesting that she had delivered. This time, activities from nearby chemical and salt industries had significantly increased. There was no sign of Imli or her young ones. We could only hope that her den wasn't abandoned. The next morning, we returned to Imli's den. Several common cranes were on their way to their feeding grounds. Because there wasn't any action last night, uh, Adi and Samad believe that the fox might have abandoned the den for some reason. We're just going to scan the area nearby once we get there and see what uh, the case really is. Dogs inside the run are one of the most likely reason. They tend to kill fox pops as soon as they find them. As a survival mechanism, the mom will shift dens. We entered the sanctuary just in time for sunrise. An adult fox was atop the den. This is Imli's mate. We were relieved to see that the den was still active. A second set of ears emerged. This was the first glimpse we had of one of Imli's pups. 
The father was very shy and he stayed behind the den whilst the young puppy curiously looked on. After a bit of waiting at a distance, the other boy also came out. Somehow, the industrial activity in their backyard wasn't a hindrance to these desert foxes. When the brothers showed signs of comfort, I approached a little bit closer and filmed from ground level. They were full of energy and mischief. Hiding, crouching and pouncing are instinctive hunting skills that they practice on one another. It's a long way until perfection. So for now, let's just call it frolicking. Around sunset, we set up an infrared trail camera to understand what their lives were like after dark. The den is active and there are two pups, but we haven't seen the parents bring any food so far. Uh, it might be possible that they do all those activities during the night. So we have set up a motion sensor night vision camera today and let's see what happens tonight. Uh, we'll come to know that tomorrow morning. I was hoping to record the parents returning with a kill to feed their boys. The trail camera didn't trigger all night. It was turned on after a very long time and it was an unfortunate way to realize that it wasn't in working condition. For most of the morning, only one of the brothers was seen. Emily, who was always around on my previous visits, was nowhere in sight. She was most likely out on her hunting or scavenging rounds. We left the den to follow up on Secret, another desert fox mother. We've just reached the spot where I shot one of uh, the pregnant females earlier in Jan and I'm outside her den at the moment. The den had a lot of these prosovis trees when I first came here and now they're all gone. The last time I saw Secret, she was still pregnant. Her den was carefully excavated under dense trees and I named her after her secretive nature. All the trees from here have been taken off. The dens are clearly visible. The only trees that are left are the ones there on that side and the ones here on this side. I mean, the only possible reason they could go missing um, are photographers who 
want to get shots of her and her pups, but uh, the trees were obstructing their view. This fox that has taken shelter of these trees as possible cover from raptors in the sky or just shade in general or anything else that can be a threat. All of that is now taken off, exposing the den, all the openings of it completely. Within minutes of visiting Secret's location, a free-ranging dog had arrived. I tried my best to push it away from the den. Moments later, Secret was seen. She could sniff out the potential threat. The dog was undernourished and it was looking for a meal. Though I packed up my tripod, I quickly handheld my camera to showcase how feral dogs are a threat to wildlife. Luckily, there was no confrontation between both the canids and the dog eventually left the den alone. Towards the evening, Secret came out of her den. And one after the other, her pups also followed. Come all you young rounders And a story I'll tell Of the promise of heaven All three of them were healthy and safe. And the warning of hell Take heed where you ramble Or too soon you will go Way up on the hillside Where the new flowers grow Early met in the springtime The piece of plastic blown in the wind Sunset. Became an unfortunate chew toy Two star-crossed lovers in the still melting snow Where the loving was easy Secret stayed close by whilst her young ones played around Where they called her a bee They called him a thief In the quiet of the evening They'd steal Where the laughter would flow And the fiddle would play Where well, the folks called it wrong But hell it seemed all right In the sun painted picture In the day turned to night So when I was there, uh, the mom left because the dog had come right from uh, behind our car. The female fox sensed it, sprang away. And then I decided to follow the dog for a little bit. And it is a really skinny male, packless at the moment, all by itself. And he's just scavenging for food, um, going through whatever uh, bone remains that he could find. He knows that being around the fox then is opportunity for something. He can steal some meals. Where the new flowers grow. The next morning, secret spops were seen through the neighboring branches. They went back into their den when the sun rose. Large mammals like these Nilgai were on the move in search of food and water.
with the den missing its protective covering, the antelope could easily trample the soil around it. After the Nilgai had left, one of the foxes came out. With the feral dog out of sight, it was safe for the little one to stay outside. Another puppy then surfaced. It was a little girl who is a bit hungrier than her siblings. What she is looking at is the tail of a rough scaled sand boa. She wants it, but the many pestering ants want it as well. Ant bites can be very painful. Especially when you are bitten on your little snout. She tried again and got her way with her prize. The other pups would have most likely already eaten. This was my fifth and final visit to the little run of Kutch to document foxes. Despite waiting silently for several hours, there was absolutely no movement at Secret's den. I returned to her den a few days later. I've scanned the area around Secret's Den. Absolutely no signs of her and the pups. No droppings, no fresh kills. I did find another one, but that seemed like an old kill by uh, the excess irrigation water. But absolutely no other sign of her. Ha, oh, man. A bird of prey was circling overhead and from its perspective you can see how the den is exposed to threats from the sky. Even adult foxes can be an easy target for large raptors. Fearing the worst, I gave up hope of ever seeing Secret again. I shifted focus to Nightshade's den. It's a new day today and um, I'm checking up on the Indian foxes. They're probably much grown up than they were. I think I saw them last three weeks ago or almost a month ago. So let's see what we have in store. In the previous chapter, I brought you three of her young ones. They were the tiniest foxes I had ever seen. With the den being on private farmland, the foxes had less threats from other animals and people. Whilst shooting, I couldn't tell what the young Bengal fox had picked up. Upon reviewing the footage, I realized that it was the hoof of a goat. Unedible leftovers are perfect chew toys. The other siblings also surfaced. At Nightshade's den, it's always playtime. This little fella had a different chew toy. What you're looking at is the leg of a hare. I 
I very briefly saw a fourth puppy. It was too shy to properly film, but I knew it was there. After seeing the unfortunate fate of Secret, it was a wonderful relief to see a happy story unfold here. There was so much activity at this den that it was evident these foxes had negligible natural threats. After expending all of their energy, nap time would follow of course. The next evening, the young fox pups were out again. Only three of them were visible, enjoying the diffused sun. Wonder if you think about me like I think of you. A short while later, the fourth puppy also came out. When you look at clouds, you see faces as I to my surprise, even a fifth puppy showed up. Wonder what would happen if I show these words to you. How a litter of three turned into a litter of five was incomprehensible. A little more time would solve that puzzle. What I wanted most was for Nightshade to return from her hunt and spend time with the little ones. She has two additional mouths to feed now. I waited until dusk, but neither mom or dad had returned. Each time I visited, I was guaranteed activity at the den. With sharp auditory and olfactory senses, the fox pups were almost always outside, exploring the immediate surroundings. They spent a lot of time sniffing around crunching on bugs that they dug out from the mud and just enjoying one another's company. At this vulnerable and dependent age, there's really nothing much to do apart from cherish what it feels like to be free. Being a highly intelligent species, young foxes need their share of sensory stimulation. Just like a human child, they too are susceptible to boredom and impatience. It was a beautiful feeling to know that the puppies didn't mind my presence at all. Falling asleep right in front of me was proof of that. A wild boar was passing by whilst the foxes were snoozing. The puppies instinctively stayed motionless and waited for the boar to carry on its way. I've waited outside that den for countless hours. After spending all this amount of time, uh, the mom got really comfortable and she came uh, near the den while I was there right outside. My guards are all full. My hard drive is full. I've been out of home since uh, the 3rd of March and it's uh, the 19th today. Oh man, all this time invested and I'm out of storage. And this is the best time to be filming. I need to figure out uh, storage, but I'm in the middle of the desert. Amazon is taking four days to have it delivered to Ahmedabad and I can't wait that long. I tried uh, 
ordering it from Ahmedabad from a local store but it, the hard drive that I want isn't available so I need to figure out something oh. the mom is outside the den right now with all the five pups and uh, as soon as she came the pups were wagging their tails <laughs> oh my god it was such a pleasure to watch that's the miracle of life right there i need to figure out a hard drive that can come by tomorrow After the sun had set, I managed to arrange a hard drive at the resort. There were beetles crawling within the soft mud. The little Bengal foxes could hear them. Digging them out was instinctive. You're watching the hunter in them developing. The puppies fetched out bugs with pinpoint accuracy. They've learnt that they can't only rely on the food that their parents bring back. Frequent meals are a scarce commodity in the wild. Circumstance gives birth to their independence. As the sun was setting again, I knew it was time for the mother to return. This is Nightshade. And this is the exact moment her puppies spotted her. Her three pups ran immediately to nurse. The fourth and the fifth puppy joined a little later. She didn't return with a kill, and the young ones had to make do with suckling. It had passed 7 p.m., and this was the closest I had ever gotten to a mother and her young ones. Nightshade kept an eye on me throughout the feeding session. The pups may not be suspicious of me, but she knows through her life experiences that human beings can be an unpredictable lot. The pups had their fill, and Nightshade stayed close by. The next day, I saw the father. He was very shy and he maintained a slight distance. He also showed up when it was feeding time. Nightshade was on the left and he was on the right. Based on limited research, Bengal foxes are thought to be monogamous. Over time the parents were a little more comfortable. They wouldn't wait until dark to return. Instead, they would remain at the den. 
the kids would go about playing and dad would do the babysitting it was still unclear how the two extra pups had showed up a couple of sand grouse were dust bathing nearby they'd make for a great meal but with the sun still out it would be a failed hunt nightshade arrived a little later lights from nearby industries twinkled in the background after spending several days with nightshade and her pups their routine was pretty straightforward the children would play enjoy their freedom watch birds fly overhead and patiently wait for the parents to return and feed them there were those days when the pups weren't very playful if there weren't enough bugs to dig out quarrels would erupt over finding and feeding rights they need to spread out a bit and find their own bugs some day they will have to split make a place for themselves in the world and find their own food there is no sharing in the wild of course a few questionable acts also take place when hormones and instincts kick in this mounting behavior like i showed you in the previous chapter is a display of dominance and control at sunset nightshade would return more industrial lights could be seen in the background this was my last day with the bengal foxes i had to follow up with imli's den but at the same time i needed to know how three puppies at nightshade's den became five i chose to film from a distance instead of going close all of a sudden one of the foxes was spooked it looked up extremely nervously all that fear just for a couple of sarus cranes flying overhead the fox puppies are still to learn who's a threat and who isn't this particular morning had a few more chew toys in addition to the leg of a wild hare was the head of a common crane in case you're wondering how the foxes get water to drink let this footage assure you that they are somehow well hydrated the puppies are hungry and they're trying to sniff out bugs to munch on but five of them have seemed to dig everything up some of them give up their search and steal from another
When the feeding is finished, it's time to put the bugs back in the mud. From the other end, of course. Fortunately for the little ones, Nightshade was around and they got to suckle. All the five puppies got their share. It's tough for the mother to keep at it. She left the young ones by themselves. This is one of the few times I managed to fit all the five puppies in one frame. But it still wasn't clear how their number had increased. I found Nightshade a little bit later. She went back to the den as it got darker. Nightshade's partner had also come by. Whilst I was filming some antelope crossing, another adult fox arrived. It was much slimmer than Nightshade and her partner. This was the third adult fox, adding up a total of eight individual foxes sharing one single den site. Though Bengal foxes aren't thoroughly researched, there have been records of female foxes sharing dens during lactation. The third adult was very warmly received by one of the pups, making me naturally assume that it's the parent of the additional litter. We were extremely fortunate to be able to document this behavior on camera. Natural threats such as larger predators competing for resources and unnatural threats such as habitat loss could both be the reason for Bengal fox parents coming together to increase their chances of survival. Emily sat on top of the den. She seemed very shy. After she left, we approached the den. The entrance looked a little weathered. The mud at the opening had broken off. Droppings of Indian wild ass around the den suggested that they made the mud crumble. An aerial view revealing their walking trail had confirmed it. Emily's boys were briefly visible in the evening. But they weren't as active and playful as the last time. There were no signs of fresh kills at the den apart from a few feathers. They were probably conserving their energy until mom and dad returned with food. This long exposure image after dark shows the brothers hungrily looking out into the distance for dinner to come home. Over the next few days, I filmed both of them from ground level and they'd curiously come over to inspect me.
until now i never had the opportunity to document the parents returning with the kill hopefully this then could change that The following morning I found large wing feathers outside the den. The foxes had eaten a bird of prey, most likely a greater spotted eagle. Whilst large birds of prey are a threat to the foxes during daytime, it looks like the tables turn at night. Without access to film at night, I missed the entire hunting and feeding sequence. Whilst it was a pleasure to spend time with various foxes and film them up close, it was discomforting to see that some of their main challenges are caused by anthropogenic activities. Over a year after I returned home, I found out from a fellow photographer that Secret was most likely attacked by feral dogs. She had an injured eye, but she was lucky to be alive. Whilst Emily continues to live alongside chemical and salt factories, the private farmland that houses Nightshade's den has been taken over by new industries. When we learn that we must give more than we take and apply that principle to all that we do, our world would be one filled with joy. The little run of Kutch is the first wild habitat to have thoroughly captivated me. Its many ecosystems are home to a plethora of life, most of which I am still yet to witness firsthand. Someday in the near future, I will return to this great desert and continue to bring you its many stories. If you enjoyed this series then give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more Your support is going to help me connect more people with the natural world I'll see you in a brand new series